somehow it just got I don't know. it just disappeared. Up. There's nothing there. There's no CN Tower. Ever since I can remember, I've been obsessed with creating extraordinary experiences for people. Even as a kid, I made eight millimeter movies about terrifying monsters and stuff coming to life, and I loved scaring my sister with them. Then as a teenager, I amazed people with magic tricks. And I, I got so good at it, I ended up paying my way through college, uh, lecturing on the art and science of the deception to groups of magicians all over the world. And after I got my degree in psychology and philosophy, I took a break from magic and decided to become a full-time professional stand-up comic. But people know that what happens in movies and jokes and magic tricks isn't real. And I wanted to be more than an entertainer. I wanted to give people an experience that defies description. Experiences that engage them emotionally and intellectually and, and hit them on all these different levels. I think it was Einstein who said that, you know, all art and all science starts. So the mother of all that is the experience of wonder, the experience of mystery. And to be able to give that to people in a wide range to me is a, it's holy work. I think it's important and it's something I take very seriously. The CN Tower is literally the visual compass for over 2 million people who live and work in Toronto. So of course the idea of somehow giving unsuspecting people the experience of the CN Tower vanishing, that idea has been kicking around in my head for years. Step one was to find a location somewhere in the city where people would believe they had a clear view of the CN Tower when in fact it was hidden behind a building. Step two involved the construction of a 30 to 40 foot replica of the tower to scale that would look exactly like the real tower. Then there was step three. Not a big step, just we just had to figure out how to make this 30 to 40 foot replica vanish into thin air, that's all. We also considered the idea of replacing the front window of a restaurant facing the tower with a flat screen TV monitor. That way, while everyone inside the restaurant thought they were looking out the window at the tower, they would actually be looking at a video featuring a perfect view of the Toronto skyline complete with the tower. And the next moment, thanks to an editing trick, the tower would be gone. Everybody on the team really liked that approach, but I was worried that the moment the people in the restaurant witnessed the vanishing of the tower, their instincts would be to immediately run outside the restaurant to witness the miracle with their own eyes. Belief is like a bus ride, and I wanted people to stay on the bus for as long as possible. I met with Andy Barry, one of Toronto's busiest designers and structural engineers, and showed him some of my original drawings for the Tower Bend. Thanks to the science of perspective, we were able to work out, given that the parking garage was one and a half miles from the Tower, a 30 to 40 foot replica should be a believable scale. But then, when we started brainstorming ways to raise and lower the replica, we almost immediately ran into trouble. Andy was convinced we should use a hydraulic scissor lift and have the replica attached to a hinged rig. But I knew a hydraulic lift was going to take too long. I figured we'd have a maximum of five seconds to somehow lower the replica out of view. Five seconds. So Andy and his team constructed a steel frame with a reinforced pivot point and a winch system. We both kept smiling, but we also both knew there was still a lot that could go wrong. As Andy and his team worked to fine tune the design, the optics, and the mechanics of the replica, I was busy trying to figure out ways to manipulate the attention of the people we hoped would witness the vanishing of the tower. We also decided to hire a professional actor, Rachel, to work with me to not only stop people on the sidewalk, but also help me orchestrate the all-important misdirection when we needed it most. So we started scouting for locations, and I just assumed we'd find one workable location in the first week, right? But we kept looking and looking and looking without success. The pressure was crazy. It was the most pressure I'd ever felt in my life. And then, thank God, we found a workable location in Toronto's Kensington Market. There was lots of foot traffic and it provided a view of the tower at the perfect scale. There was also a parking garage with an open roof so we could actually drive everything we needed right up onto the roof. Inspired by Orson Welles' classic War of the Worlds fake radio broadcast we decided to tap into the authority of mass media. I wrote up a short script for my friend Rob, set him up with a microphone, and had him deliver the fake radio broadcast from a nearby parked van. Then we set up some audio speakers near the front of a couple of stores, along the same stretch of sidewalk where we planned to try to stop people. That way, anything Rob said into his microphone would sound like a live broadcast from a local DJ. And then I came up with something involving an almost archetypal item, a wrapped gift in a bag. 
So here's the plan. We're up here on the parking garage. We're assembling our 40-foot replica of the CN Tower. There's the real CN Tower, right over there. Taunting sight. People on the street down below are not gonna be able to see the real tower because it's blocked from view by this parking garage. Andy and his guys have been over here working on the hinge end of this. This is the complicated part. It's gotta be just right. The steel alone is 200 pounds, and I'm told it weighs about 1,200 pounds when we're trying to lever it up. And it looked fantastic, even better than I ever imagined. Rachel and I were finally ready to see if the story about the bungee jumpers on the tower was gonna work. Did you guys see something artist. happening on the tower? Something happening on the tower. They're jumping from the tower. Someone's gonna bungee jump from the tower. And Rob in the van started delivering the false radio broadcast. This is Rock and Rob, and you're listening to DCVR FM 89. If you happen to be in the downtown core and have a view of the CN Tower in the next five minutes, there are a group of extreme stunt artists on the tower. The replica looked great and our story about the bungee jumpers was doing a wonderful job of stopping people and getting them to stare at the tower. But would the drama of the dropped gift provide the all-important misdirection for those five seconds we needed to secretly lower the replica down onto the roof? <gasps> oh my God. Now. I'm so sorry, I, did, I, I apologize, I'm so sorry. Um, shit. Sorry, man. Oh my God! What the hell, man? I'm sorry. It worked perfectly. The reactions? They were absolutely priceless. They were unlike anything I'd ever seen, performing magic or stand-up comedy or even pranking. Many of the witnesses were confused and disoriented. Others seemed to doubt their senses. Some looked frustrated, even angry while other people seemed elated and almost joyful. The tower, the tower just gone, it just disappeared. I still don't know what happened, will someone tell me? I looked up, but nothing there. There's no CN Tower. Ultimately, it was such a humbling experience to have been able to work with so many talented and cool people, try this thing, pull it off, and give so many other people this unforgettable once-in-a-lifetime experience.